Hi, welcome to Project Geo Spatial, uh, and uh, we're at the GeoInt Symposium in Denver, Colorado. <laughs> we have the pleasure of speaking with Google again, another year. Uh, yeah, Jeff, you. welcome back. Appreciate it. And uh, we're actually introducing Brady Allred this thank time, you. right? Yes. Um, so first off, give us a quick overview. Everybody knows Google, but give us a quick overview of Google and the Geospatial Conference. All right, great, appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for the note. So Google Cloud, is uh, an umbrella group within Google that has uh, a whole slew of technologies in it. Uh, AI, ML, Zero Trust, Workspace, some of the Gmail docs tools that you may use. And we also have this uh, production tool called Google Earth Engine, which shouldn't be confused with Google Earth Enterprise, which was the spinning globe. We have a little name collision detection there <laughs> on that. This is an analytic tool, a geoint analytic tool. And some users in our geoint community use this tool to do things such as crop health, crop detection, uh, greenhouse gas monitoring, uh, change detection, land use analytics. And I think a lot of people are familiar with Google Earth Engine, but I think what people don't realize is how much, uh, before it was more, um, I think it was more used for humanitarian, and yes. you know, especially with, like, I think it's uh, Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca Moore. Rebecca yes. Moore, right. And, uh, but recently, in the last two years, yes. you spun it out as an enterprise solution too, right? We did. Last year, we kicked this off at one of our internal projects, uh, a big conference called Next, and uh, made this a production element. And so uh, the, the scope has grown. There are a lot of people using this for disaster response, humanitarian assistance. This has a lot of even migrant trafficking, uh, human trafficking, there are a lot of analytics that could be done in there. A lot of people are using it for scientific purposes uh, in the in the carbon uh, recording perspective, you know, monitoring carbon around the world, uh, a lot of you for climate change research as well um, in the commercial space. So for this community who wants to take advantage of Google Earth Engine uh, as a solution to their problems, what's the process of uh, getting that within their environments? This is, uh, this is very helpful because the way Google works is a little different than some of uh, other vendors here. We provide what's a, a fixed cost effort. So we have, NGA is essentially prepaid for a certain number of users who can use Google Cloud and Google Earth Engine within that. And so that's going through a group within the analysis directorate, specifically ATS. And uh, we plan on having hopefully in June, uh, a somewhat of a uh, what welcome to Google Earth Engine Day That's awesome. at NCE oh, and, man, and have that's this exciting. picked up. The, we talked to uh, Miss Dixon yesterday. She yes. was super interested in this. Frank Avila with the commercial GeoInt is looking at this to load in perhaps some other unclass tool sets like the ASF with some SAR uh, and some other commercial vendors to use Google Storage to allow this as a commercial GeoInt front door to not only all of the unclass imagery that's in here, uh, that's that's basically the open source with all the Landsat and Sentinel. But in addition to that, some of the commercial vendors who are here. Does that include some of the machine learning services that you uh, uh, imply it to? We'd love to get a demo. Hopefully we can have a living demo well, right let's here. Let's do that. Let's and do the that. demo gods right and see some ML right now. You're, you're sucking me into the discussion. We gotta okay. do it. Let's, let's okay. check it out. Yeah, so one, one of the neat things that you can do with Earth Engine, I mean, it, what it really shines at is doing things at scale, right? And so we have all this public geospatial data, and then you can bring your models or your algorithms and code them up, and then you can deploy those models yeah, and algorithms at scale. So what we're looking poly? at here can is a measure a of production or just across point? Ukraine. Just and so this point? is something that was... Um, what kind that, of production are we talking about? This is actually point. a measure of photosynthesis. So it's kind of vegetation production, but we're gonna use it in the, in the sense of crop production is what we're gonna look at here. And I think Jeff's yeah. gonna, Jeff is gonna click on a, uh, on a spot. Perfect, yeah. And so what we can do is for the last five years, we can measure uh, production across Ukraine. And so this was initially prototyped and developed in the United States, but because of the way Earth Engine works, we can easily deploy this model to any area in the world. So, so what kind of imagery are you using for this? Because obviously in the U.S. you have things like NAEP or uh, yeah. Landsat or, or even Sentinel across the world, right? Yeah, absolutely. So for this, we're using a combination of Sentinel and Landsat data. Okay. So we're combining them together because in Earth Engine we have both those archives together, the entire Landsat archive. Well, that's something that needs to be uh, mentioned, right? You actually, as Google, um, but parallel to Earth Engine or even within Earth Engine, you host a series of yeah. government data sets, correct? Yeah, so we host 
host all the major public kind of geospatial data sets, all that public open source imagery, we have over 50 petabytes worth of imagery in within Google Earth Engine. Excellent. And so users can very easily query that imagery and perform an analysis. And that's actually, that's a big differentiator. We've seen a lot of tools at this conference, and those tools are amazing, but data accessibility is also a, uh, a big issue, and uh, having the right data partnerships or access to lots of data is, is, is important for uh, quick analysis. Kind of the traditional you know, remote sensing workflow has always been you spend most of your time collecting the data and little of your time answering the question. Earth Engine, we tried to flip that, where we collect the data and you can devote all of your time to answering the question. And so in this particular case, we're looking at production across this polygon that was, uh, that was drawn and we're monitoring it in real time. So we're looking at the black line is showing production in year 2022 right now. And we're comparing it to the growing seasons of the last four years. And so what we're seeing is, you know, a, a lot can happen right now. There, there's a lot of work going on, a lot of management. But we can track this throughout the growing season and can, we can say, has crop production, is it on par to what, what it was last year or the year prior to that? And then that information can be used, you know, for any, uh, any further analysis. Great, uh, that's awesome. Um, so what's the output of this? Where can people take these types of products after they, they visualized it, uh, done the analysis in Earth Engine? How can they take that out and integrate with their tools and applications? Yeah, so they can, they can do the analysis and they can get the results and then integrate the results into any, you know, their, their framework or any operations they have. But they can also connect their framework to Earth Engine via API. So Earth Engine is, is you can connect to it via several different APIs. And so there can be a seamless connection between your frameworks, your kind of your local operations and what you want, and the results that are being spit out of Earth Engine. Awesome. What's the onboarding or training look like to get spun up on Earth Engine? So you, you do need to have a little bit of expertise in remote sensing, right? And, and kind of in imagery, and you need to know what you're talking about. But beyond that, it's very easy to jump in and to bring your models and your algorithms and then to code them up. We have a web-based IDE uh, that's hosted in the cloud, entirely cloud-based. And you can code that up, develop, prototype your models, your algorithms, iterate, get it better. And you can visualize it instantly and see, you know, how's it working? How's it operating? And then when you're ready, you can deploy that model across your entire region of interest. Excellent. Awesome. We've seen some people take some of these products uh, and push them to as as smaller components of a, a bigger product on a disconnected environment. Well, that's so, the, that's another note is you can put this on disconnected environments, right? You cannot. You but cannot. Okay. Some of the output. Uh, the output you can. Just yeah. Okay. That's excellent. Um, well, is there any last uh, uh, last notes you want to send our audience about uh, either Google Earth Engine or some of the stuff you're doing? Um, with integration with things like NGA or other yeah, customers? Yeah, I think uh, just the main plug will be the way NGA purchased this uh, agreement, the Google Cloud effort, there are some, they, they built in a little bit of growth to allow more users uh, from outside ATS. So uh, we know COCOMs and some of the mission partners are very interested in this product. And so we have some extra seats. So, so if you get with out. us or ATS, Come on and try it out, it's right? already prepaid. So how do they reach out to whoever needs to get a hold of to uh, get, uh, get started? Get with uh, me and Google or with um, an ATS lead I can get you to. That would be Jeff. You can always uh, zoom in on his badge here. The spelling <laughs> of his last name. The only one in the gal. The only one in the, the gal. only one in the gal. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Give us a rundown of Google Earth Engine, specifically how it affects a community such as this. Yeah. Um, everybody knows how awesome Google is. Uh, but it's also important to know what the uh, positive impact you're having on the uh, geospatial community as well. This is a cool product. We love it. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Project Geospatial. Uh, talk to everybody next time. <laughs>